Hello. So I've gotten a lot of people asking um, various questions about how to get like the new input system set up. So I thought I would just make a video to kind of show how to do it. Um, I'm going to do it in the context of the uh, shoot 'em up, so it's a little more helpful. Um, all I have in here right now is, um, you know, background. A little shit prefab just made out of primitives, no scripts on it. And then just like a light and a camera. Um, I'm not actually gonna, yeah. So the first step in this is to install the package if you don't have it. Uh, it's pretty quick, just go to Windows. Uh, oh God, it's a uh, package manager. And then you'll want to switch. It'll usually start in, um, in project. You want to switch over to Unity Registry. Type in input system. It should just come up. This one will be the only one. Uh, and for you, it should say install if you haven't installed it. Usually, you have to install it every time you have a new Unity project. So if you make a new Unity project for the shmup, which you probably will, you have to install it again. It's kind of annoying. Uh, and then once you install it, you'll, you'll either A, get a little prompt that'll tell you to, oh, restart Unity so it can like set it up. And if you don't get that, which I think happens on older versions, you'll have to manually do it. Um, you can go to File, um, where's it? Edit, 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 <laughs> Project Settings, Player, Other Settings, Scroll Through, it's a lot in here, uh, here. And you'll want to switch it from Input Manager Old to either New or Both. I'd recommend just committing to New. Both allows you to use both Old and the New, and New just locks you into using the new. Um, and then once you do that, it'll make you restart Unity if you, have, if you ever change the setting. Um, Same so with the pop-up, it'll restart Unity really quickly and then it'll be all set up. So once you got it set up, which I already have it in here, you'll want to click, right-click in the project area, create, and then it'll be way at the bottom. You'll have a uh, input actions. So you want to create one. Uh, call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it uh, ship action app and then you can open it by double clicking you'll get this little window i like to you can dock it wherever i like to dock it kind of up here um so in here you'll want to create a new action map that will generate all this for you um you'll want to call it whatever i'll call it ship it's good to remember this because you're going to access this through code later you can always just check back but so name is something that makes sense um, so ship, and then actions, and then you have your properties. So essentially how the movement will work, um, what this allows you to do, um, it allows you to do a lot of things, but one of the things it allows you to do is create a vector two um, that you can modify by pressing different buttons. So you could have it, you know, um, have add one to X when you press a, minus one when you press D, add one to Y when you press W, minus one when you press S. And that'll allow you to then take that and then in a script, apply that to movement to allow you to move an object. How you would set this up is over in actions. Um, you can switch this over from button to pass through, which will allow you to uh, have multiple elements done at once. So like if you have WASD will allow you to have both W and D pressed, for example, so you can move diagonally. Uh, set it to, can I just say pass through, pass through, uh, vector two. And then from there, you can delete that. You'll want to create a uh, add up, down, left, right composite. I believe in older versions, this might be named something different. Um, However, it's, it'll just be some sort of vector two composite that'll generate you this. Uh, and then you can just go through and assign each one of these, you know, a path. Hit listen, the key, W. So up would be W, down would be S, left would be, what's that, A. And then right would be S. You can do whatever you want for these, but well, that's just pretty good. Um, and then with that, you're all set up, I believe. Yep, you're all set up. You'll want to make sure you save the asset. If you see this little thing here, it means it's not saved. You can also auto save it, but you can also just hit save. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to go here. You want to make sure you 
um, generate C sharp class, uh, and then hit apply. And this is where it's important that you save it, because uh, if it's not saved, it will gen it'll generate it off of the unsaved one. Whenever you come in now and update this, it will automatically update the C sharp class you generated. I used to not realize that, and I would regenerate it every time, um, which is really annoying. You do not need to do that. If I make a change here, so for example, or later, let me also name this action, um, move net. Um, you can also, I'll come in here, add a new action. Uh, this is going to be for shooting. We'll use this one later. Uh, this one just needs to be a button, and then just bound to, I like to do space for this. And then if I hit save asset, you'll see it's going to recompile. Yep, and that's it recompiling the generated C-sharp script. So you don't need to regenerate it. I did not realize that for quite a while. Um, yep, so that's all good. So now that's the script generated. We can create our actual script we're going to put on the player. So sharp script, let's call it uh, ship. Let's just call it ship for now. Yeah, works. Uh, we'll take ship. Uh, it's going to be recompiled. Give it a moment. Okay, so pop ship. Oh, it's already there. Make sure you don't put it on twice. I've seen that people do that before <laughs> several times. Um, so ship. So now we can go and edit it. So the way that's often shown, that I think uh, Jeff usually shows is, um, from what I remember, is you use some sort of component in Unity to set up the events. That does work. Uh, the way I've usually found from tutorials online is you do it all in a C sharp script, and it's pretty simple, and it's a little bit more organized. So I'm going to show you all how to do that. Um, you'll need to make a void awake uh, private. I need private. That's fine. Private uh, void on enable uh, and on disable is also important here. Essentially, how on enable and on disable will run. Um, they run whenever the script is turned on or off. But also when you initially run, it usually runs start then awake. Um, but it also will run on enable. So it'll run awake, then on enable, and then start. So it'll run awake on every script, then on enable, and then start if it's enabled initially. So it essentially gives you a third check you can do, which is kind of cool. It also uh, allows you to disable inputs if the script is ever disabled, which will prevent a lot of weird errors. And finally, prepare for it to start. So what you'll want to do, you'll want to start off by making a, um, let me close these because I think I was testing this earlier to just make sure I knew what I was doing. Um, I'm going to open the script. So this is a generated script. You don't need to do anything in here. Uh, it's a bit uh, intimidating. Um, you don't need to touch it. You just need to take note of the name. So in this case, ship action map, it should be the same name as your action map that you made. So, and then you come back into here uh, and you do um, private, doesn't need to be private, private ship action map, which would be the script, not the actual map. Um, and then just ship action map. So then you can, so this essentially uh, allows you to have a script, this script on the script, sort of an instance of that. And you can actually create that instance on the script, which is a bit confusing, but it allows you to essentially use that script from here, but as an instance. So to do that, you simply do ship action map that, uh, sorry, equals new ship action map. Colons, or colons, uh, brackets, and then here. So this will create that new instance. And then you'll also need to enable that. So ship action map dot uh, enable so this will initialize it and then after it's initialized in on enable this will um turn it on basically it's also good to turn it off and on disable so if this script is ever disabled on the actual ship for whatever reason it will cause these weird errors we're still trying to run stuff on this script even though it's, it's sort of null in a weird way and then this allows you to do this and then this and then in here, you can subscribe um, functions to certain events on the map. We don't need to do that for movement, but we will need to do that for shooting. Um, I'm going to start off with movement, though. Um, so the simplest way to do movement is just to do an update. Um, I used to be like, oh, you don't need update. 
if you use the uh, new input system, there is cases where it can be handy. Um, this is one of them. So what you can do is you can take this instance, because this is essentially an instance of this script, right? And the script is essentially taking this information and converting it to how it's actually working. So you can essentially take the same path um, off that script. So you see ship movement. I can go over here, go back into my script and go um, ship action map dot uh, ship dot movement. So that's the same path as here, ship movement. Um, and then what I can then do is this has a vector two on it right here. I can actually just get that vector two value. To do that easily, I can do um, just movement dot read as val read value vector two, and that'll essentially return the value of the vector two, which is modified already by uh, WASD keys. So that should already be <clears throat> be working. So the best way to use that value uh, is to take our actual, uh, this will be on the actual ship, so we can do transform uh, no, position plus equals this. Um, we'll want to create a speed variable to be able to control our ship's speed. So serialized field doesn't really need to be public, so serialized field private float speed. This is called move speed. We can take this multiply it by move speed and then multiply it by time dot delta time to be able to keep it consistent depend no matter what the frame rate is um we have an error right now and i believe that's because uh it doesn't like this when you try to add a vector 2 to a vector 3 it gets mad at you so you can actually just cast that vector 2 to a vector 3 like this and it won't be mad at you this will essentially turn this which is a vector 2 so say it's like negative one zero, it'll turn into negative one zero zero. It'll give it a z value that just defaults to zero. So that allows us to just very easily only move on the x and y while still using 3D space, basically. So you take that vector two from the map, uh, cast it to a vector three, multiply it by a move speed variable that you can set in the inspector, and then multiply that by time to delta time so it uh, adjusts to the frame rate. And then you add all this to the transform that position, and it should work. Um, let me head back out to my scene and then set my speed. What's it? There we go. Ship. Uh, let's just put your yeah, like 25, I think, worked for my other test. And then it should work. Yep. It moves. So it can move up, down, left, right, diagonal. It's really nice with that. It's kind of a nightmare to do diagonals with the old input system, so it allows you to just kind of whoosh. Um, so it moves, that's the first step. There is no bounds, but it does move. Um, so the second thing is to create the shooting function. Um, this requires the use of a kind of event system thing. Um, so let's go back to the script. And this is what start will be used for. And this is why it's really useful to be able to have three sort of ordered things where it'll always go awake, then enable, then start. Um, so we'll want to do, we'll want to get the same path here, well, similar path. So you can just copy paste this. So your action map dot ship dot instead of movement dot uh, shooting. And then there's two ways you can go about it. Um, you can actually use any, you can just use the entire shooting thing, or you can use a specific context. The easiest way is to use a specific context, because we, we know we want shooting to only happen on performed. So we can do dot preformed here, and then plus equals context, and then equals, uh, it looks like an arrow, I guess that'd be like, that is uh, greater than. Um, and then we'll assign a function, so this is called shoot. Um, let me put in parameters, context. And then we want to actually go create that function real quick. So private void shoot. It's also important. I did not spell that right. I don't know. I spelled shoot wrong. There we go. And then we'll need to actually, as a namespace, make sure we're using unity engine. 
that input system. That's important because that gives you access to uh, input manager, I believe. Input action dot callback context uh, context. And now, essentially, what this means is that whenever um, over here, whenever, please let me get there. Okay. Uh, this is performed, basically. Like this thing is in the state of performed. Um, it will run, uh, shoot, it'll run this function and pass it the context, which will be performed. So this basically allows you to run this as an event, and this way you don't actually need to do any checks and update or constantly be checking for it because the event system will handle it in itself. So whatever we put in here will run. Um, whenever we just press space, because I think that's what it's assigned to. So if we go here. We should get a printout whenever we hit space. It should only run once. Yep. So basically anything we put in that function will run whenever we hit space. Another thing to note, um, context is not that, this can be whatever you want it to be. So you can literally just be like, as long as that's the same as here, that didn't want to copy for some reason. Let's try that again. As long as that's the same, it'll work. It's not like a specific keyword or anything. It's just sort of a name. Um, it doesn't even have to match this. Like these, it just has to match here. Um, it's just telling it you're passing in a parameter, basically. Uh, and that gives you access there. Um, so I'll go over real quick. Probably the best way to actually shoot a projectile. Well, at least a way to shoot a projectile. Um, well, I'm here, let's see, so you want to do, you'll need three things. You'll need serialized field, uh, a transform, if you don't want to use your default, like you're just game, your ship's transform. If you have, like, say you have a gun on your little model and you want to have a specific point you want the bolt to come out of, you can set that transform. Uh, bullet spawn, you'll need a uh, game object, you'll need a prefab. And you'll need a speed or force. Realize field. This is going to be a float. Uh, bullet. I cannot spell bullet. Force. So, the easiest way to just do a shoot function would just be like take, um, create a game object, current shot. I got a lot of people asking me too, like, how do I make a thing shoot? So, I thought I'd show this super quickly. Current shot. Uh, this is a way to do it. Um, current shot equals instantiate. Uh, then you want to instantiate your prefab at the transform that you set up here. So bullet spawn dot position and bullet spawn dot rotation. You'll then want to um, get your current shot dot get component. It's important that you have a rigid body <clears throat> on your uh, shot prefab for this to work. If you don't, you will get an error. Um, so keep that in mind. You will need a rigid body on your prefab for it to work like this, but just get component uh, rigid body dot add force, which will just add force to it. Vector three. In my case, I just want to shoot up, so I can just do vector three dot up times my bullet force. And then another important thing is you make sure you do comma force mode dot impulse. And this will just give it an impulse force up, basically. And then you want to make sure, just in the case that it doesn't hit something, because it probably will destroy it if it hits like an enemy later, you want to give it like a timer. So destroy. Bullet, uh, heck, what did I call it? Current shot. So your sort of instance you have here that you're tracking. Current shot. And then just whatever time you can make this a variable if you want. I would just set it to like four or five or whatever. 
That's how fast it's moving, but five would be more than enough. Um, then this should be all you need. You have your ship move and shoot a projectile. Um, you can then go back to your ship. Make sure you fill out all these. So I do have stuff I can fill it out. I have a little gun piece in my prefab, which is just this little piece here. And then I have shot and then bullet force. Let's try like 30. And it should allow me to move and shoot. And that's, yep. All it really takes. It's really not too much code. That's what's really nice about the uh, new input system. And you can see over here, they are getting destroyed. So it's not going to, you're never going to have more than like 15. I mean, I guess if you really mash it, you can kind of get a lot. You can definitely set a, uh, Bool to kind of control your shot speed, like so you can't just mash it too fast if you want, but that's up to you. Um, but yeah, so it's really not too many lines of code. It's like, what is this, 57? Not even really, because it's a lot of gaps. Um, like 40 or something. It's really not that, not even that. It's not too long. This is, you know, if I like trim it down a bit, it's like, here are some of my formatting stuff I do. It's, uh, it's like what if I really compress it? It's like 42. <laughs> that's all it really takes. It's, it's really not all that much. And yes, yeah, so that's the basics of how you get the input system working for the shmup.